Australia-UK trade and investment relationship is, is really one of our most important. The UK is the second biggest investor in Australia and that's a, a growing and contemporary relationship with, in 2012, the UK being the second largest growing investor in Australia as well. In recent years, UK exports have grown by about 80% uh, since 2007 uh, to Australia, both in terms of goods and services. Uh, and as uh, David said, the uh, investment relationship uh, is very important with the UK uh, being the second largest foreign investor uh, in Australia. But it's a two-way relationship and Australia is a very important uh, investor in the UK as well. We've seen strong growth in trade investment across many sectors, uh, particularly in sectors like ICT, um, professional and business services. Uh, and we have um, all our major British companies are, are operating uh, in Aust the Australian market in some shape or form uh, and uh, increasing their investment. Uh, I went to see uh, AstraZeneca as a facility in North Ryde just a couple of weeks ago uh, and they're investing a hundred million Australian dollars over the next three years uh, to increase production of that facility. And along those lines, I was in Adelaide earlier this week and the new Royal Adelaide Hospital development has infrared capital partners as part of that consortium. And the redevelopment of the Adelaide Oval uh, had involvement from companies like Mott McDonald. So really good involvement from UK companies in Australian infrastructure activity and at the same time a great deal of involvement from Australian companies in similar projects in the UK. And Infrared at Capital Partners is a good example of a company that's actually entered the market uh, recently. I mean, they set up their first facility here in Australia at the beginning of the year. Austrade in the UK has a role in promoting inward investment into Australia. And some of the things that we say to British firms are that our economy is strong, 22 years of uninterrupted growth, uh, that we're in a region which can make us something of a springboard to Asia. Now, many UK firms are already very well aware of Asia and familiar with Asia, but still can find Australia to be a very useful place to base their activities as they grow their activities in Asian markets. Uh, we're focusing a lot on technologies. Uh, we've launched recently a, a campaign uh, promoting eight great to technologies, uh, including areas like uh, robotics, uh, and uh, regenerative medicine, uh, satellites, uh, areas where the UK has particular sectors, uh, scientific strengths, uh, but also uh, where we've got the commercial capabilities as well to m really make and promote those sectors. Uh, so we see real opportunities. And like uh, David, I do see opportunities for UK companies to, to use Australia uh, as a base for the Asian market. I, I mentioned earlier in, uh, about AstraZeneca, well, again, much of their production from their facility uh, is going to China and other Asian markets. And there's a similar story really for Australian companies using the UK as a base for some of their activities in Europe and more broadly to Russia, for some into Africa as well. And we see cases like, for example, the major banks and also companies like Ramsey Healthcare taking that kind of approach. I'm really excited by the prospect of the uh, infrastructure summits that we uh, intend hosting both in the UK and here in Australia to really to encourage UK and Australian companies to work together and also to try and unlock some of the capital that's needed to take forward some of the major infrastructure plans that we both have in our countries. I think there is a real appetite on the part of institutional investors to invest uh, in infrastructure uh, in the UK, uh, given the current sort of regulatory uh, sort of environment, which is very favourable to, to investment. Uh, and obviously we, are, we obviously wanted to try and encourage that uh, to, to realise some of our great uh, ambitious infrastructure plans. It's such a strong trade and investment relationship, but it's a relationship that we need to continually work with and continually keep it growing and keep it contemporary rather than just being a relationship of tradition. Absolutely. Even though I was, I was born in Manchester, I have visited London many times, I hadn't realised just how, just the place that Australia still has within the UK. And for me, this is something that Australia needs to continue to work on, not take for granted, because we are a long way away. It's a fantastic thing that we're still the preferred place for any person from the UK who's leaving the country to go and live. Uh, it's fantastic that we have such a, such a, a remarkably high level of tourism between the two countries, given how far apart they are. Uh, but these things 
they aren't necessarily there forever unless we continue to work at that relationship and continue to build our trade and investment engagement.